Oh yeah, I'm in a good ass mood. Was just listening to some good ass tunes. Let's get into it. Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to your monthly I love this stuff with Megan Hughes. I'm Megan Hughes and I'm gonna be showing you all the things that I've been loving this month. And honestly, it's a lot of music. So I'm just gonna start off with all of my handheld things and then get into all of the unpacking of the tunes. First things first, let's do skincare because that's always the most fun. This is something that I wanted to feature in an I Love This Stuff back in like January or something, but I had just started using it. So I was like, mm, it's a little early to tell, but now it's months later and I still love it. So here we are, the Ginger and Turmeric Vitamin C Jelly Mask from First Aid Beauty. I love her work. She's so good, it's like, just like rubbing jelly all over your face, man. And then you just let it sink in for like 10 minutes and then you just feel rejuvenated, renewed. This is like a good morning perk up mask, I would say. Um, but I mean, you can use it at night too, obviously. But I just, I love it. I, it makes my skin feel very soft, very, I don't know, just rejuvenated, a little bouncy, all of the good things. This next product is also a little gel product. And this is from Kors. It's the After Sun Greek Yogurt Cooling gel for face and body. So basically when I get sunburned, I put this bad boy on. And this was wonderful timing, course, with this just showing up at my doorstep. They sent me this along with a sunscreen that I've been using as well because they know I'm a pale-skinned woman. And I literally got the shit like right after I had just been sunburned. It's like they knew because I spent way too much time in the sun. I was gardening with like my back to the sun, you know, and I was wearing overalls in a sports bra. And so just I had a nice racer back sunburn on my shoulder blades and it was bad. So this saved my damn life more so than my aloe vera from Trader Joe's. I'm thinking I just need to invest in getting like an aloe vera plant because bottled aloe vera doesn't do it for me. So I don't know, man, I love this stuff. And then my last skincare product is this little eye cream and it's from the sensitive skin line of Burt's Bees. And they sent me their sensitive skin line and this is so far my favorite product. I've been using it every night, nightly routine type stuff. And it's just very lightweight. I don't feel like it's, you know, so heavy that I have like full cream under my eyes like I would just put this on and not even feel it and then in the morning I just wake up and I'm like oh it's gone great and I mean I can honestly say that I've never been an avid user of eye cream but I'm feeling like you know I'm, I'm in my 20s like I should start doing it before I'm getting lots of crow's feet or something I don't know man I just yeah. The next thing I love is these earrings. Dude, look at them. These magnificent faces. I'm gonna put the at of this girl Taylor Parks. I think her at is like Trailer Parks or something quirky like that on Instagram. Um, I actually found her through this girl Kimmy who sent me a bunch of artwork and I was just like, God damn Kimmy, her at is Sunlight Design. Um, and I had just been following her and then she plugged Taylor's work and was like, go get some some of these earrings they're so fantastic and handmade by her and I just DM'd her and I was like man I need some of those earrings and she was like okay just you know Venmo me $17 and I'll ship them out and they came within like four days or something and I've just I've been loving them she has silver and gold and I just think that's so cheap for like such a magnificent pair of handmade earrings you know what I mean and like support small artists man go and check her out if you want to get some of your own like I said her app will be on the screen I hope you do all right now I have two books to talk about, but only one of them I have to show you. The first one that I don't have in my hands is currently in the hands of Orion Carlotto because I sent it to her when I finished it because I was like, bitch, she'd love this. And it's called Corazon by Jessica Salgado. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I think I did. And it's basically just a book of poems. Jessica is a Salvadoran poet and she writes like a little bit in Spanish, mostly in English, but she just writes a lot about like, her culture, love, her homeland, 
her moving to Los Angeles and like, you know, she writes a little bit about gentrification in Los Angeles, what it was like before that happened. And um, yeah, I don't know, man. I just thoroughly loved every single freaking poem that I read from her. And shout out to Raina Biddy, another poet that I love because she shouted out that book and that's why I picked it up. So poets loving poets, man. And then I sent it to my friend who's a poet. My second book is a young adult novel that Oh my god, this series is so, so dear to me. Becky Albertalli's writing is so, so dear to me. Um, this is basically the sequel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. It is called Leah on the Offbeat, and it's, you know, just a sequel from the perspective of his best friend, Leah. If you guys saw the movie Love, Simon, I was an extra, shout out. I was in the scene where they were talking about um, going to Bram's party, if you want to find me in that. It was probably like the back of my head or something. I don't know, I only saw the movie once, but anyways, if you saw the movie, man, you would love this sequel, and if you like young adult novels, then you would also love it. It was just so cute and so queer, and I just loved every freaking second of it. It's about, like, a little over 300 pages, and I finished it in four days. Like, that is a new record for me because I thought that, you know, my new record was reading Looking for Alaska in four days, but that's less pages than this bad boy. And just, oh my god. Becky Albertelli, I love her so much. She writes fantastic. She also has another book before this one. Um, I've read all three of her books that have come out. And then she has a fourth one that she's working on that they like teased at the end of this book that was also just fantastic. Anyways, man, I've read Seven versus a Homo Sapiens Agenda, The Upside of Unrequited, Leah on the Offbeat, and when she releases her fourth one, you know I'll be copying it. I love it so much, and I breeze through young adult novels. It's like you're just immersed in it. This one was so good because it felt like I was in like high school again. They're like going to prom and stuff, and oh, it was just such a time. What a good book. So go and pick it up, fellas and felines. <laughs> what is the feminine version of a fella? Ladies? I don't know. Now I have three vinyl to talk about. Um, specifically, let's start off with Mr. James Taylor, my throwback king. My parents like raised me on this music, um, specifically this record, Sweet Baby James. I love this man so much. He's just, like I said, he's a nostalgia enhancing king for me. My favorite tunes on this are Sweet Baby James, Sunny Skies, Oh Susanna, which I didn't know. I'll be talking about another record after this, but that song birthed another song that I like. Fire and Rain was like my sister's favorite song growing up because my parents played it so much. Oh God, I just, I don't even know what to tell you other than if you like kind of folky sounding good time stuff, I don't know how to describe his music, but he's incredible. And just look at that, <laughs> look at that glare. That nice, mmm, smolder. Yeah, he's a sexy man. Um, who knows what he looks like now. But anyways, love his work, he's great. But now, I wanna talk about My Name is Bear by Nako Bear. I got this vinyl for Christmas, and I have also been bopping the heck out of it. I played a lot of the tunes in my, like, spirituality kind of music episode of my podcast. Basically, just spiritual tunes. That's what the theme was, and then I broke down all of the wonderful topics Topics they were discussing because artists like Nako are so good in the way that they just really push the agenda forward. They're gonna start talking about all of the stuff that maybe not everybody's talking about, but we're down to here, you know? And he has a song on this called Susanna, and he says, Oh, Susanna, now don't you cry for me. Something about distant waters and ocean for to see. That was a shitty representation of that lyric, but that song was birthed because of Susanna on James Taylor's record. I just hit myself in the head with this. But you know what I mean, man. I never made that connection before until I listened to uh, the James Taylor one, like right after I had just been playing Nako, and I was like, wait. I've heard that before. Oh, Susanna, now don't you cry for me? <sighs> so that was just an interesting connection to make, but I love Nako. If you guys love just great, like I said, folky tunes with James Taylor as well. He's a very distinct voice, and he also just talks about amazing things, and I love him. And now, my third record I want to talk about is from my baby, Solana. SZA released Control in 2017, and it was the album of the year, I want to say. You know, people just freaking loved it. And I love this woman so much. I mean, I have just been loving on her since like 2014-ish kind of time. And so when she announced that she was going to put Control on vinyl and then sign them, I was like, bitch, yes. And so I ordered this 
in August of 2017 and I got it in April of 2018 because it had just been through so much. I mean, first of all, it was just on hold by like the seller for so long, like just not being shipped. And then once it did ship, of course, I had ordered it to my last apartment in LA. <laughs> so somebody else got it and then I had to pay for them to ship it to me, but it was worth the panic and it was worth the wait, man. She signed a nice large signature over the front and it's just so freaking beautiful. Like once you open it, you're just like, um, okay, you're gorgeous and stunning and a queen. We love it. And yeah, I just love this album so, so much. And the vinyl itself is <laughs> freaking green. I mean, how much better could it get? I also got a shirt that says control on it that I wore in my last Easiest Frick Meals with Megan Finn episode. And some of you are asking where I got the shirt. So that's where I got it was in this like package deal. But anyways, this is a great freaking album. And if you love like R&B, rap, pop, I don't know, if you're just a human being with a brain, check out any of these artists because you'll love them. Okay, now aside from handheld music, I have other music to talk about with you today. Specifically, in my last I Love This Stuff video, I was talking about how my friend Vivian just released a single called Mortal off of her new EP, Firebender, and I was just raving about that, and then I was like, I don't know when Firebender's coming out. Poof, hits me in the face, two weeks later it comes out, and I've just been bopping it ever since. I also played a lot of Viv's music in my spirituality episode and my last episode of the podcast. Honestly, just, I stan. I stan Vivian so much. I'm so, so proud of her. So please, please, please go and listen to Firebender, the EP. It's incredible. I mean, it's like six songs, I think, and every single one of them is a freaking bop. I feel like the EP is a nice project to reflect her like inner healing, you know? And being that I know her personally, I knew the things that she was singing about, and I was just like, yes, you're healing yourself through the music and healing the world from that. Fucking love her, man. All right, and speaking of pals whose music I love to put on, I also played Ed Coddington's tunes um, in my last podcast as well. But basically, he just grew up with Finley, Eddie. Never met him in my life, but we play his music in the car all the dang time. And he just released an album called Where Am I Going? It's on all streaming platforms, and it's great. It's like, you can so tell that he just made it himself, and it's so raw that way. I'm not trying to say that in like a bad way, like, oh, you can sell he produced it with his blood, sweat, and tears. It's such a good thing when people do that. I'm like, damn, you really just recorded this like by yourself in your room? That's crazy, you know? And wow, I mean, I just love his music so much. I think that he's such a talented guitarist and that more of you should go and listen to him because like I said, support small artists, man. 25 out of 10 he is. And now I have two other artists to talk about who have released new music as well recently. Leon Bridges, man, he just released a new album for the first time in like three years, I wanna say. It's called Good Thing and it's incredible. I mean, I just, I love so many songs off of it, but specifically Beyond, Shy, oh my God, Georgia to Texas. Georgia to Texas is like my number one up there. Like, yes, this is a great ass tune. Um, but I was talking about this also in my most recent podcast. <laughs> go listen to it, okay? Just go freaking listen to it so I don't have to keep saying all these things over again because you'll be like, heard it, bitch, moving on. Anyways, um, he went for like a different sound on this album compared to his first album, Coming Home, which was my shit. He definitely went for, in some tunes, a more like jazzy, Anderson Packy kind of vibe. So it was like, fuck, Leon, I just love when you sing your beautiful ballads to me. So pretty much all my favorite songs on the album are like the beautiful ballads that aren't as like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. I just like picture him like thrusting and shit when I hear the upbeat ones. And it's just funny, man. But I mean, like, they're still good songs. Like, I still bop to them, don't get me wrong, but they're not my faves. Anyways, still great album overall. Lots of good ass tunes on there. Go check it out. And while you're doing that, Mac Miller just released three new songs. One of them is my favorite. It's called Buttons, and it has like a yellow cover, so naturally it would be the one that I adore the most. I don't know how that worked out so perfectly. One of the covers was like, blue, one of them was red, and one of them was yellow, and I was like, the yellow one's my fave, so. They're all pretty good, but the song Buttons is my freaking fave, and Mac just released solo music for the first time since 2016, so obviously I'm here for it, and I'm so happy, and I was so slightly emotional about it when it happened. I was like, fuck, yes, 
I wasn't expecting this. He just flooded my timeline with some links and I just ate them all up, man. But yeah, that's pretty much all the ding ding things I wanted to talk about today. So basically, if you enjoyed this, I mean, give it a big thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Ring the notifications bell if you want to be notified when I upload. And until the next upload, stay smiling. Bye guys. Got my mother's eyes and my father's nose. My soul.